Why is Kulna Dhulu Hadil Kariya? And just recall when we said to you, enter this this city or this town, Hadil Kariya. Now, which was that city or town? Here again, Quran doesn't mention the name. Hadhi, this. Enter this town. But you know, the biblical description tells it. It was the town of Jericho or Ariha. That was the first town that was captured by the Bani Israel after their exodus from Egypt. And that was the beginning of their conquering Palestine. So the first town that fell to them was Ariha or Jericho. It's very important today. In the news you find this name, you know, repeatedly. Enter this town and eat bountifully therein with pleasure and delight wherever you wish. But enter the door bowing your heads. That was very important. When a conqueror enters a town which he has conquered, or an army enters a town which he has conquered, which he has conquered then you know the, the next they are high up, the heads are high, they are proud. But when Muhammad وسلم, entered Mecca, he, his head was bowed down. His forehead was touching the hair of the, the neck of the horse he was riding. Because this was not the time of arrogance, it was the time of humility before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same commandment was given to them. Udkhulul Baba Sujjadan, bowing yourself. And repeat the word Hitta. Hitta means meant in, in Hebrew. Hitta, O oh Allah, Iqfullana, pardon us, grant us our mistakes. Hitta, and going with your humility and say, Forgive us. Naqfir lakum khatayakum. We shall forgive you your misdeeds or your mistakes. And those of you who are good doers, we will, we will increase their rewards. But those evil doers, those who were the evil doers, they changed the word that was given to them by another one which was not given to them. And it is given in, in Torah, they said, Hinta, Hinta. Instead of Hitta, Hinta. Hinta means this wheat. We need wheat. We need wheat. This was the bad habit of these Jews from the very beginning. And we shall find that with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they used to say, Raina, Raina. So this, this will, inshallah, we shall read when we go progress further. فَبَدَّلَ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا قَالُ الْغَيْرَ الَّذِي قِيلَ لَهُمْ فَانْدَلْنَا عَلَى الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا رِزَّ مِنَ السَّبَاعَ So we send down upon those evildoers a punishment from the sky. لِمَا كَانُوا يَبْسُقُونَ because of their rebellion nature, rebellion and disobedience. When this Taska Musa again remember the time when the nation of Moses, people of Moses, asked for water. It's Taska Musa It's Taska to demand water, to drink. Because there was no source of water. And for such a big, you know, perhaps there was some camping at some place. And at that place there was no source of water. And now 600,000 people going without water, what condition would have been there, it's, everybody can imagine. Now they gather around Moses alayhi salatu was salam. You find these, all these details in Torah, in very lengthy details. They cursed Moses alayhi salatu was salam. They said, you have done us something very bad. At least we were there in Egypt, although we were slaves, but we were eating and drinking and we were having all the goods of life. Now, although we have become free from that bond of slavery, but nothing to eat, not even water to drink. Where have you brought us? That was the attitude of the people. Now, when they gathered round Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam, demanding water, Hazrat Musa alayhi salatu was salam prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O Allah, produce some source of water for us. Fakulna, we told him, we asked him, Idrib bi asak al hajar, strike this rock with your staff. Fan fajarat min husnata ashrata ayna. 
there gushed forth from that rock twelve springs. Qad alima kullu nafi mashrabahu. Every tribe knew its place of drinking because there were twelve tribes. They were the progeny of twelve sons of Hazrat Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam. And there were twelve tribes. Now look to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't give them one one spring. They would have fought each other. So twelve springs gushed out. So every tribe fixed for itself that this is our spring and this is our spring. So that there was no infighting between them on this water. قَدْ عَلِمَ كُلُّ نَاسٍ مَشْرَبَهُ كُلُّ وَشْرَبُوا مِنْ لِسْتِ اللَّهِ وَلَا تَعْصَوْا فِي الْأَرْضِ مُفْسِدِينَ And as if it was said to them, now eat and drink from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided you. And don't, do not act corruptly, making mischief of the earth. وَإِذْ قُلْتُمْ يَا مُوسَىٰ لَنْ نَسْبِرَ عَلَىٰ تَعَامٍ وَاحِدٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given them man and salwa. All the dietary needs were fulfilled by these two. They were getting them without any hard labor, without cultivation, without farming, everything easily at hand. But now they got tired with these two things. By skultum, and remember when you said, Ya Musa, O Moses, Lan nasmira ala ta'amil wahidin. We can't be patient with this only one food. Continue, continuously taking one food, this man and salva, nothing else. Fadu lana rabbaka. So pray, pray to your Lord for us. Yukhli lana mimma tumbitul ard. He should bring about, bring out from the earth what the, the earth grows. Mim bakleha wa kissaiha wa fumeha wa adaseha wa basaleha. It's herbs, it's cucumbers, it's garlic. It's lentils and it's onions. Now these are the things you, which add taste, you know, to your food. So no, because they were very much accustomed to the taste of these foods, now they demanded these things because all their dietary requirements were being fulfilled. So now additionally, uh, every man needs some, something which is tasty. Moses <laughs> said, do you want to exchange that thing which is better with, with that which is worse? Aduna, or inferior at least. The meaning is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you a better food. And you are asking for something which is inferior. Although there are tastes in it. But actually that food which is nourishing, which is natural. That is much better that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you. You want to get in exchange something which is inferior. And you want to lose that thing which is superior. Now this word ehbetu note. This hubut is not from sky to the earth. The same word. Ehbetu misran. Go and settle in some city. And now if you want these things, you will have to cultivate the earth. You will have to grow these things. All these things, you know, you can't get automatically. You have to settle now. This life of Bedouin and this life of traveling. Now you will have to give it up. If you want these things, and then you will get what you are demanding. This ayah is very important. And humiliation was heaped upon them. This is, so to say, conclusion. Due to the, these misdeeds of yours, Due to these misdoings of yours, due to this going astray of yours, you were punished. The punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to you by this decree. Humiliation was heaped upon them. And they drew the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Misery. Maskara misery. And they drew on themselves the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zalika bi annahum kanu yakfuruna bi ayatillah. And this is because they used to deny and deny the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa yakfuruna nabiyyina bi ghayri al-haq. And they had been killing and slaying the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without any reason, without any cause. Zalika bi ma'asawwa kanu yaatadun. And this punishment was given to them 
because they disobeyed and they were transgressing the bounds of the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 